Hello, my name is Philip Eaton and I'm here to talk about Vectrex development using the fourth programming language. This is the first one in a series of short videos I hope to make. Um, let's see how we get on. So first question is, what is a Vectrex? Well, as it says on the screen here, it's a vector display based home video game console um, that was developed in the early 80s. Um, it was only on the market for a couple of years. Um, wasn't that popular, but nonetheless, it's got a quite a good following now. Um, it's cartridge based. It has a 6809 microprocessor, 8 bit. Um, and it's a really nice system for homebrew software. Um, there's a very vibrant community out there um, for, for this kind of thing. Um, and I think that's because it has a, a set of BIOS routines inside it in, in EEPROM or in ROM that are usable by application programmers for graphics, sound and joystick handling. And really all you need is a text editor and a 6809 assembler um, and you can write programs for it that will work with an emulator. Luckily there are no custom chips on the device um, or or um, any other protection circuitry or anything like that that make it awkward if something goes wrong. They're always quite easy to fix. And of course, once you've written your program code that runs in an emulator, you can get a little printed circuit board made up and put it into a, a case, which is readily available, plug it into the side of a real Vectrex and it will work. And uh, lots of people have done this um, and uh, also created nice boxes and cases that they can then sell and some some titles are very popular 500 plus copies being sold okay so we know what the vectrex is what about fourth so fourth is a very low level programming language somewhere between assembly and c which was designed by a guy called charles moore or chuck moore as everyone calls him in the late 60s about 1968 um, and in my opinion, it's a very good language for developing applications on a platform such as the Vectrex, i.e. an 8-bit microprocessor um, with limited resources, i.e. RAM and ROM. I'll talk a bit more about the reasons why I think 4th is ideally suited for this kind of project uh, a bit later on. So why am I doing this project anyway? Well. Back in the 90s, early 90s, straight out of university, my first job was working for these guys as a hardware and software engineer. And I was programming fourth on Z80-180 based single board computers. Um, now Z80-180 is basically a Z80 with a built-in memory manager, so it can easily access about, well, we, we used it with half a meg of RAM. And it's also got a couple of onboard UARTs on it, so we could have serial communications out of them. And what we used these for was to control and monitor equipment such as into other microprocessor systems or directly to switches and, and, um, and uh, relays out in the field. Um, and the software on these things was written by two people. One was my colleague who took the vendor's operating system, the fourth operating system, and installed it on the single board computer. And the second guy was me, and I did the application programming to make the, the devices talk to other intelligent equipment or, um, as I say, read, read inputs and, and outputs or, and make outputs. And uh, also to uh, write to liquid crystal display screens, for example, for doing graphics. So what that actually meant was that I never got to deploy the software onto the, the bare metal computer. I was always writing the application software, which which I enjoyed. It was great fun, um, but I always wondered what it would be like to actually do that. It was you know going that extra level in to bring the thing up from cold with no software at all and actually make it do something. And then what happened at the end of the 90s, early 2000s, just after Y2K, um, I moved out of that that kind of industry completely into um, uh, financial services, IT, and uh, fourth was was somewhat left behind. Only by me, of course. Fourth is still used by many, many people around the world. For example, NASA are using it with, with satellite technology. I think it was also on the, the shuttle as well. Anyway, let's fast forward 16 years to 2016. Um, I was at a friend's place in France and he happened to have a Vectrex sitting um, on the side. And um, it didn't work when we tried it. So it ended up in the back of my car coming home with me. 
Of course, the uh, the problem with the Vectrex was the, the regular white dot problem. Um, so I managed to get that fixed with a bit of soldering and, and um, jiggling around of EEPROMs and got it working. And then I was as I was looking around to try and find out how to fix this Vectrex, I came across what looked like a great homebrew software scene, great small community, um, as I said, because it's a simple platform to code for, no custom chips, um, but with a quite a powerful microprocessor. Um, for example, the 6809 is also used in the Williams Defender arcade game, of which I have um, one in my garage. Um, and I love that game. It's, uh, it's very fast, it's fun to play, and as I say, uses a 6809. So clearly the Vectrex has got potential for some great games. Then some thoughts came back to me from when I'd been searching over the web over the past 10, 15 years, and I came across something called Camelforth, which is a ANSI compliant fourth system for Motorola 6809. Now I know fourth, I don't know 6809 or much about Vectrex, but nonetheless, this was some free software and it looked quite interesting and potentially it could be run on the Vectrex. So just maybe then I could take this camel forth and use it to develop like we did back in the 90s. How did we develop in the 90s? Well, at the time the, the PC on my desk was a 286 with one meg of RAM. I think it had a 20 meg hard drive. And what we did was we had another fourth system running on that PC which allowed us to write the software in an editor and then cross compile it to um, Z80 code, which would then send down to an EEPROM programmer like this one here. In fact, this is the one we used, an S4. We also used an S3 before this, but we upgraded to an S4. And using that, that um, socket on the top, we could plug in an EEPROM, program it, and then plug it into our single board computer and see if it worked. And if it didn't, we would then erase that EEPROM, um, change the code, recompile it, send it back down to the S4, reprogram it, plug it in again, and would repeat that circle all day, every day, whilst we were developing code. Here's what the EEPROM, EEPROM erasers look like. You could slot a number of EEPROMs in here, close the drawer on this little device, and inside there was a, an ultraviolet light which would erase the EEPROMs probably take about 10 or 15 minutes and then you could reprogram them again. So we had a big box of EEPROMs that we would um, erase you know, every few hours and then proceed to use them over the, the rest of the day. Now the Dataman S4 had another function called emulation mode and if you look closely here there's a button there um, near the top under the word info, under the button that says info, that says emulate. And what that allowed us to do was send the program down to the S4 and using a ribbon cable, which you can see here, um, connect it onto the top of the EEPROM socket on our single board computer. And if you hit the emulate button, which, which you can then connected that um, that to the, the S4 using the, the ribbon cable. So you had the S4 connected to the EEPROM socket using the ribbon cable. And you could press the emulate button and then the S4 would do exactly that. It would emulate the EEPROM that you had on your single board computer, which meant you didn't need to burn EEPROMs anymore. So that was another advantage that the S4 gave us um, as we as we move forward with technology. So instead of us having a, a round time of probably, I don't know, a couple of minutes to, to blow an EEPROM every time we compiled our code, with the S4 that came down to about 20 seconds because we could download the software to the S4 in say 10 seconds Actually, let's talk about the compilation. We'd compile it, that might take 10 or 20 seconds. We could then send it to the S4 with a couple of keystrokes, another 10, 20 seconds, and then hit the emulate button, and it's working. Very quick, under a minute. Okay, so we've seen what the development cycle was back in the 90s, but why fourth? Why am I interested in this and not assembler directly, or C, or, or basic even? Well, generally fourth is quite fast. Um, I'll show some examples of that in a moment. Um, if I compare it with assembly, well, it's, it's quite low level, as I say, fourth. Um, and if you really get into fourth, you will see lots of assembler. Um, it's similar in a way to C in that uh, you can directly write assembler in it if you need to, but you have high level structures that allow you to um, uh, abstract your, your programming concepts away from assembler, which you know, is very difficult to read generally. I'm, I'm sure no one would argue with that. 
Um, it's also much faster than basic, although not as easy to learn. Um, realistically, basic's never going to be very good for doing any sort of action game, so I'm not even thinking about that. Um, and, and back in the day, in the in the 80s, um, so quite a lot of games had fourth in their development. Maybe not actually on the code itself that got, got sent out with the game, but some certainly were. Gore, for example, is written in fourth um, with lots of calls to assembly. I've, I've seen the source code for it. It's, it's, um, it's quite interesting. Nonetheless, fourth does have some innovative features that aid this kind of embedded programming. Um, it's a stack-based language. It doesn't really use many variables um, due to using the stack, and it uses reverse Polish notation, which I'll come on to later. Um, interestingly, the code that you're writing with fourth is actually modifying the fourth operating system. There's no difference really between the compiler and new code. It's, it's all the same code base. Um, and something really uh, useful is that it has an interactive prompt, just like basic computers had back in the in the 80s. Um, when, with your with your Commodore 64 or your Spectrum, you got an OK prompt. You could type things in; it did things straight away. Fourth has that as well. Actually, those two aforementioned computers didn't have an OK prompt, but this one did. The Jupiter Ace. So the Jupiter Ace was a Z80 based computer designed by the same guys that designed the ZX80, ZX81, and ZX Spectrum. They worked for the company for a number of years and then. I don't know, must have got disillusioned or something, decided to leave and open their own company. And their own company came up with a thing called the Jupiter Ace, which is very, very similar to a ZX81 inside, a bit more advanced. It's got high resolution graphics, for example. But instead of having basic in there, it's got fourth. And they, they, they improved it somewhat for this kind of, um, for this kind of application. Um, but look at what they say in the text here. They say um, it's 10 times faster and four times more compact than basic. So is it really 10 times faster? Well, actually, yeah, that's about right. And is it four times more compact? Well, yes, it is. You can get a lot of programming code in a very small amount of space with, with fourth. Um, it's, it's a major advantage. Well, I guess that was a major advantage um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the 80s when it was around. And they sold this computer, I think, it, well, it says here, it had a Z80A, um, 8K ROM, and 3K RAM. Um, and yet you could, you could have all sorts of programs running in that. And actually, one thing the Jupiter Ace could do was use a ZX81 16K RAM pack to increase its memory. Uh, it shows you how close the designs must have been. So let's have a look at a Jupiter Ace. This is an emulator that's online uh, that I found. Um, here's your OK prompt. Now you can type things in here like you would with BASIC and it will come back with things. Um, I'm going to use just one word here and that's VLIST. What VList will do, it means vocabulary list, and it shows you all of the words inside fourth that you can use. So in basic, you'd have uh, let and go to, for and next. In fourth, you've got all these words here that um, are available for you to use. Let's look at one of the programs as well. Um, I'm not going to show you many of these, but nonetheless, here's one. Where's it gone? Here you go. Here's a centipede game that was written on the fourth, uh, written on the in the uh, on the ace. I assume this was fourth. It could actually be assembly. I don't know, but the chances are it's fourth. There's quite a few here to look at, so it wasn't the most popular of systems, but it had a few games on it. <clears throat> so this is the centipede assembler uh, uh, program. I'm going to hit enter. Now I have a Dvorak keyboard. As I said, it means that it's very difficult for me to control anything. So let's uh, have a go on this. So I've got J and L for left and right, and A to fire. Okay, there we go, left and right, and fire. Looks quite credible. Um, was this written in fourth? I have no idea. Probably, as I think most of the programs were. But um, as you can see, it's, it's usable for creating games. Okay, so that's, that's the centipede game. Let's have another one that uh, people might be interested in. Moon buggy. A little bit like Vector Patrol? Well, let's have a look. There's some instructions. There we go. A bit more of a. Here we go. So this is the game. As you can see, it's uh, yes, it's Moon Patrol. Oh, you've got spaceships here. There we go. So looks a bit limited compared to Vector Patrol, certainly, but nonetheless, it's playing the game. 
to show you what the, the Jupiter race could do. So why are we looking at the Jupiter race? Well, as I said, it's, it's running fourth. Um, it has an interactive prompt. It's comparable to what the Vectrex is hardware wise. Obviously it's a different processor, but it's roughly the same. Um, yeah, that's the Jupiter race. So we're looking to do something like that with the Vectrex. So let's have a little look at what some fourth code looks like. I found another emulator which seems to be a bit easier to use than the, the Jupiter Race one. So let's let's do some fourth programming here, some very simple stuff. Um, and this shows you how reverse polish works. Reverse polish um, is a way of, of defining, well, I suppose in its raw sense, mathematical problems. Let's say you wanted to do one plus one and see what the answer is. So in fourth you wouldn't do one plus one, it won't work. What you actually do is one, one, plus, and that adds the two together. And what it's showing you is that on top of the stack is a two. That's the result that you want. So if I do dot to print the stack, there's my two. So let me put some more numbers on the stack. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, there's the stack of numbers. And what I can then do is add them together, and print the result. So that'll add four to three. Actually, let's do it one at a time. Plus, four to three is seven. Then do a plus, which will add it to the 2. Then a plus, which will add the 9 to the 1. You've got 10 on the top of the stack. And then I can hit dot, which will print it. So that's how reverse polish works. <clears throat> now let me create a new word in fourth. Um, I'm going to do something that will do a hello world example. Um, let's call it hw. And it will do dot quote hello world. Okay, so that's a, that's a new word there. It starts with a colon, ends with a semicolon, and it's now compiled. And to make that run, I type hw, and what that will actually do, dot quote, means print this text, and then stop printing when I get to the next double quote. Hello world. So that works. Let me do another one. Let's do uh, a word called, I don't know, let's call it hello. And it will do it 10 times. So what we're going to do is a 10 naught do loop, do hw loop semicolon. So this is another new word, hello, that will run the hw word here oops, 10 times. And as you can see, it's ran this word 10 times in 10 naught in a do loop. So that's, that's what fourth looks like. And in fact, the rest of this page has got a whole bunch of tutorial information about how forth works. So you've got swap, rot, all sorts of things, dot to print. Well worth a look if you're interested in forth. So that's the intro with a little bit of Vectrex and a bit more forth. So now, really, for, for this little video, all I want to do now is just define what the objective is of my project. So. It's basically to adapt the 6809 Camelforth to run on the Vectrex, complete with an interactive terminal, um, which the, Vector does, the Vectrex doesn't actually have an interactive terminal, so that, that's going to require some work. Um, I want to be able to use Forth to draw some vector graphics on the vector monitor, either by interfacing the Vectrex BIOS routines that are already in the PROM, or maybe just using direct Forth commands and provide replacement BIOS routines. I want to do it such that the fourth is a relevant and usable alternative to using assembler or C. Um, I don't want it just to be a curiosity toy like basic would be. Um, and I want to try and make it such that it's an environment that's accessible to as wide an audience as possible. It's got to have some sort of IDE that's, that's usable relatively easily. Um, the finished product I think would be called VEC fourth and um, I want to have some fun whilst I'm doing it. So. Um, that's the objective of the project. And with that said, that's the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.